when I studied charter financial analysts. Level 1 and Level 2, I did not memorize seven standards of conduct. Fortunately, I was able to pass Level 1 and 2, despite low scores for ethics. But my low scores in ethics finally got me to fail Level 3. And then, I decided to study ethics adequately. And then I was able to pass Level 3, thanks to improved scores for ethics. When it comes to ethics, should we memorize seven standards of conduct and 22 substandards? I would say in general, you could improve your ethics scores by memorizing seven standards of conduct and 22 substandards because you could see the big picture of ethics by memorizing key principles for ethics. Some people say they have a bad memory, so memorizing all these are too burdensome. Do not worry about it. If you watch this video and practice for 30 to 40 minutes, you can remember all seven standards of conduct and 22 substandards. We can memorize these in an easier way by adopting the memory palace technique. I learned it by reading this book, Unlimited Memory. All right, then let's get into it. Memory palace is the key to long-term memorization of a large amount of information. Basically, you need to mix your long-term memory, which is your familiar palace, into short-term memory, which is the things you have to remember to create mid-term memory. This technique is much more effective if you create your narrative. But you can use my narrative because we are going to memorize just less than 30 standards. Suppose you just stated your career as an investment banker. The first standard of conduct is professionalism. Starting from yourself, professionalism is required to become a great investment banker. We go through four substandards by looking at you from top to bottom. For the head, the knowledge of the law is required to know what's allowed in society. For eyes, you evaluate everything independently and objectively. For the mouth, you should not misrepresent investment analysis and facts. For the hands, you must not engage in any professional conduct. When you have a professional, you are ready to go to the capital market. The second standard of conduct is the integrity of the capital market. On the road to the capital market, you may find material non-public information. Also, you are tempted to manipulate the market by using material non-public information, but you decided not to do that for the integrity of the capital market. Now that you are ready to meet the clients. The third standard of conduct is duties to the clients. For this standard, we go through five substandards by looking at clients from bottom to top. When you meet a client, you give him shoes as a symbol to represent loyalty, prudence, and care. You meet a different client, you also need to give her shoes for the sake of fair dealing. Every client has different shoe sizes. So, you got to give clients suitable shoes. On the knee of your client, you present investment performance for your client. And then, you preserve the performance information in the five of your client. After meeting your clients, you get back to your company. The fourth standard of conduct is duties to employers. Before entering the company, you pledge yourself to loyalty to your employer. You go up to the second floor where the cafeteria is located. You have free lunch. It is additional compensation arranged by your employer. After lunch, you go up to the Sky Lounge where you can supervise the staffs for which you are responsible. Now that you arrive at your office. The fifth standard of conduct is the investment process. You read many papers and books on the desk to find good investment opportunities on a diligent and reasonable basis. If you find good opportunities, you communicate with your clients by phone and email. And then, you put the relevant documents into your drawer for record retention. You finish your job and get to the metro to go back to your home. The sixth standard of conduct is conflicts of interest. On the electronic display in the metro, numerous conflicts are disclosed. Entering the platform has an order. After clients and employers enter, you can enter the platform due to the priority of the transaction rule. When you get into the platform, you have to pay the referral fees. After entering the platform, you can see a lot of business cards flying around. The seventh standard of conduct is the responsibilities of a charter financial analyst. Candidate. There is a broadcast on the platform announcing the conduct of participants in charter financial analyst. Institute programs. Lastly, you check out the business card. You can see your name, charter financial analyst. Just imagine the location first. 1. Yourself from top to bottom. 2. Capital market. 3. Clients from bottom to top. 4. Employer from bottom to top. 5. Your office. 6. Metro station. 7. Metro platform. Just review this narrative a few times as you travel a memory journey. You will remember 7 standards of conduct and 22 substandards without setbacks. That's all.
Thanks for watching this video.